Welcome back to this week's episode in the ongoing Simple Space Shooter tutorial series. Uh, this week we'll be adding a scrolling space background to our game because every space shooter needs that. Uh, we're going to start with sourcing the background and then we're going to talk about how to rotate it programmatically. And then we're going to finish off with a little bit on source control. I'm going to show you how to download this project from GitHub and also how to do your own source control. If you already know how to do all that kind of stuff, you can go ahead and skip that last part. But if you have never done that before, I strongly encourage you to start here and learn how to do it. Okay, let's get started. Uh, first things first, we need to find a background for our scrolling space game. Um, let's create a folder for it here. So down here in the, the project view here, uh, at the top level, of the assets folder. We're going to create a new folder here by right clicking. Let me back up and do that slower. We're going to right click, go to create folder. We're going to call this materials and then I'm going to open that up. Now in a browser, uh, come to pexels.com. This is a great site for getting free stock photos. Uh, link will be in the description of the video. Uh, while we're here, we're going to look for panoramic night sky or starry night. I think starry night's probably good. And go ahead and just explore the photos and see if you can find one that uh, works well for you. Uh, I went and downloaded this one by Felix Mittermeier. And I just want to free download. Down here we can see that it's free to use and that's a, it's a free license. And that's great. Uh, we want to just make sure that it is a panoramic photo, uh, which is to say it's got this massive field of view, uh, like a 360 photo kind of a thing. And uh, yes, go ahead and download that. So once you've downloaded it, we're going to come back into Unity. We're here in the materials folder. We're going to go to where we downloaded it and drag it in to Unity. And so now our JPEG is sitting in this materials folder. Now we need to create a new material. So I'm going to right click in here, go to create and then material. We're going to name this material Starry Night Skybox. Over here in the inspector when I'm, uh, make sure you're your new skybox material is selected. Uh, over here in the inspector, we're going to go to where it says shader, go to that drop down, and we're going to go to skybox, panoramic, and we're going to drag our photo and our JPEG into where it says none texture here, over by where it says spherical HDR. Now, to make the skybox apply to our scene, we're going to go to window, rendering, lighting. I'm going to go to this environment tab and under skybox material we're going to drag in our material that we just made this starry night skybox material and under sun source drag in this directional light from our scene and now you can see uh, we have a skybox that is the starry night uh, make sure your starry night skybox material is selected and then over here in the inspector I just want to note a couple of these fields uh, so you can change the exposure to see, you know, make the background lighter or darker. Um, and you can set that to whatever you want. Um, but I want you to pay particular attention to this rotation property. So note what happens as we rotate. The background starts scrolling. So we want a way to programmatically do that. So let's go ahead and create a script to do that. So back here in the project hierarchy, I don't know what to call it, <laughs> in this project view here uh, under the assets folder there's a folder for scripts. If you have, if there is no folder for scripts go ahead and create it but that's something we set up in the first video. So in the scripts folder we're going to right click, go to create and then C sharp script and we're going to call this script rotate skybox. And then I want you to go to the hierarchy view here and click on the main camera and add that rotate skybox script to the main camera. 
So when you create a script this way by hitting right click, create, and then CSARP script, it's going to add some Unity mono behavior boilerplate to the script, and that's what allows it to be attached as a uh, component to game objects within your scene. Uh, remember, Control S is to save, by the way, and go ahead and do that. Uh, so let's double click on our script to edit it. And you can see here is some of the boilerplate that comes with the script. We're just going to go ahead and delete all that stuff in there. We're going to expose one property to the inspector. So we're going to do this serialized field. This is what tells Unity to expose that property to the inspector. And we're going to call this property private float m underscore rotation speed. And we're just going to say 1f for now. Now we're going to create this function, private void fixed update. And then write this code, render settings.skybox.setfloat underscore rotation in quotes, and then time dot time multiplied by our rotation speed property. Now, I don't, if this is, if you're brand new to coding, I don't necessarily expect this to make sense to you, um, but we'll go through it nice and slow here. Um, and if it doesn't make sense to you now, eventually it will. Um, okay, so real quick, the rotation speed, um, this is pretty self-explanatory, I think. The higher that number goes, the faster your skybox is gonna rotate, and the lower that number is, the slower it's gonna rotate. Um, what I really wanna talk about here is this fixed update function. So uh, you're gonna be doing a lot of code within these fixed updates and other update functions. Uh, this comes as part of a, the mono behavior. So these are a set of functions that are uh, that you can you can use within mono behaviors like private void fixed update or private void update. Uh, and what these update functions do, uh, these will get called every single frame uh, of your game. So this is where you can put in a lot of game logic because it'll just loop over and over and over again. And uh, so what's the difference between update and fixed update? Well, there's a, there's a couple of these, right? There's update, fixed update, late update. And primarily the difference is the order in which they execute. Um, and also sort of how often they execute. So uh, fixed update, you're gonna wanna use mostly when you're doing stuff that involves physics uh, because it updates at the same rate as the physics engine. Uh, regular old update is just going to execute every single frame. So if you're going at 60 frames a second, you're gonna get that many updates per second. And then late update is Pretty much the same as update, it just comes at the very end. So um, if you need to modify something uh, one last time at the end of a frame, you can do it in late update. So I think that kind of hopefully clears up what's going on there. So anyway, so as we said before, fixed update uh, at a fixed uh, frame rate, this is just going to get called. Everything in this function is going to be called over and over and over again. So what's this one line doing basically? So render settings, um, that where we just set our skybox, those those lighting settings, you can kind of think of that as, as, as what the render settings are here. Uh, so render settings dot skybox. So this is the exact skybox that we just dragged into that, that uh, lighting settings there. Um, set float. So the skybox is a material. And back here in Unity, If we look at this material, see, so here, here's this rotation. This is this float rotation. Um, this is an exposed property on this shader. So this is how you would set uh, a value for those expo exposed properties within a script. So we're doing set float. What's the name of the property that we're setting? And then finally, time.time .time times rotation speed. So this time.time .time is just going to keep increasing as the game goes on. So when you press play, it's going to start at zero and then just keeping incrementing with the time, the time that passes. And then we're going to multiply it by the speed. And that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, so, okay, that's the entire script. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, back out in Unity, 
uh, we can uh, go ahead and test it now. <clears throat> uh, one thing to note, if, if we click on this game tab here, uh, our spaceship, uh, as it's sitting at 000, uh, is kind of right in front of our camera, which is not a particularly interesting view. So we're going to click on our spaceship here in the hierarchy and go ahead and move it out. So I'm going to move it to uh, maybe 25, maybe 30 on the Z. So it's moving forward out of the camera, 30 meters. And then we're going to move it over here. Let's say negative 34 on the X. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the Y. So this is more or less, it's probably actually going to be a little further back. Let's put it 50 on the Z and negative 60 on the X. Um, so you can kind of envision when we're playing the game, it's going to look something like this, right? Okay, let's come back out to this main camera so we can see our rotate skybox component. And we're going to go ahead and hit play at the top here. And we should see the skybox rotating. Yes. And if we play around with this rotation speed, you know, I can set it to something high and then we can see it really zooming by. I think for our purposes, we probably want it something a little more on the slow side. So something like 0.5, but feel free to set it to whatever you want. Uh, one thing to note when you set a value here while you're in play, when I hit play again to stop the game from playing, it's going to go back to uh, every value that I changed is going to reset itself back to before we hit play. Um, so if you do end up making changes in play, uh, one thing you can do, so I'm going to go ahead and set this back to 0.5, is you can right click on the component, go to copy component, and then when you exit play mode and it gets reset, I'm going to right click on the component again and hit paste component values. And now it's pasted in that 0.5. Uh, so that's something that you'll frequently find yourself having to do. Um, okay, so that's that's everything uh, for this, this week's tutorial. Um, in this next section, we're going to talk about source control a little bit. Uh, we're going to start out with how to clone my GitHub repository that I have for this tutorial series. And then how to do your own source control. Again, if you already know how to do that, you can go ahead and skip this part and I'll see you next week. If you've never done source control before, I implore you to, to watch this and try it out on your own projects. You're going to want to do that from now on. And we'll talk about a little bit more what are the benefits of doing source control um, in a little bit. To launch Git, we're going to go to the start here, this Windows and Windows 10, and just type Git, and we're going to launch the Git GUI. You can also use Git Bash. This is like a Linux terminal, but I think uh, for demonstration purposes, we'll stick with the graphical user interface here. Okay, when you start Git GUI, this is what it's going to look like. Um, let's start with pulling down my GitHub repository. So to do that, we're going to hit Clone Existing Repository. Under source location, we have to find the link to this GitHub repository. So in your browser, uh, come out to this GitHub simple stingy simple space shooter repository, link in the description, and go here where it says code, pull that menu down, and then we're going to copy this link here by clicking this button. So now this link is copied, this GitHub link. So back in here under source location, we're going to paste that link in. Under target directory, you're going to select a directory that you want this, this repository cloned into. So I'm just going to do D clone test. And then I'm going to hit clone. So it's going to take just a second here, and now the entire repository has been cloned down. Um, so if I go to the clone test on my machine, I can see all the files from GitHub. So for your own, when you want to do your own source control, one thing I want you to do is grab this gitignore file and copy it and put it into the base folder of your own project. So the same folder where assets are and packages and project settings. And there will be a lot other of other files in that in that folder, but 
Um, just know it's it's the folder with assets, packages, and project settings. What Git Ignore is going to do, just briefly to touch on this. And by the way, if you can't see it, you might need to uh, check hidden items, show hidden items in your windows. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> what a Git, Git, Git Ignore is going to do is it's going to make it so that Git doesn't track certain folders that we don't want it to track. Uh, we primarily want Git to track source code. We want it to track folder structures. Uh, we want it to track, you know, our textures and our models. We don't necessarily want it to track stuff like Visual Studio caching directories and um, just all sorts of things, all sorts of other little, uh, you know, anything, these, these specific uh, Visual Studio project files. We don't need that stuff tracked um, in source control. Unity is going to go ahead and create those uh, every time we, we look at the project anyway and we open it up. Okay, so yeah, um, just to recap, you want to copy this git ignore file and place it in your own base directory. Okay, so let's talk about setting up your source control. So you've copied the git control or the git ignore into your base directory. I'm going to go ahead and delete this repository that I just cloned just so we can kind of start from fresh. Uh, from scratch there. So I'm going to delete this .git file. And now this is no longer a git repository. Uh, I'm going to start up a new instance of the git GUI. And I'm going to type, or not type, I'm going to click on create new repository. And I'm going to navigate to the directory that I want. Uh, so you're going to navigate, in your case, to your projects directory, uh, that top level directory with the git ignore file and the assets folder and, and all that stuff. In my case, I'm going to navigate to clone test. And then we're going to hit create. And now we're ready to stage our initial commit. So you can see here we have all these unstaged changes. And anytime you make a change to the the project, you're going to get unstaged changes. For this initial commit, that just means every single file you have in the project. So I'm going to click stage change down here, hit yes, and then for the initial commit message, we'll just call it simply initial commit. And then finally hit the commit button. So now you can see here there's no unstaged changes, so everything's up to date. So let's talk about why you want to do source control. Well, here, um, like for instance, if I change a file here, you see I just start typing and I hit save. And I come back out and then I hit F5 to refresh. Now I can see basically any changes you make will be in these unstaged changes and you can see every single change you make. The, the, there will be a, a, this is called a diff or a difference and it'll show you all of the changes that happen to that file. So the advantage of source control is basically you can't break your project. Once you've start source controlling it, no matter what happens to your project, I can go in here and like, oops, I deleted a bunch of folders. And if I was not in source control, that could be potentially very, very bad. Um, but since I am source controlled, everything is reversible. See, so I can see here, I have all these unstaged changes where these files got deleted. I can come down here revert changes and now all my folders that I deleted are back and all the files that got deleted are back. So the point is you, you really you cannot break your project once you've started source controlling it and that's really the big advantage. Also if you're trying to coordinate changes between if you have more than one developer basically and you have to coordinate changes between the two of you, this is, this is kind of a must. Um, this is the best way to do that. Uh, okay, so that's really everything I wanted to show. Uh, I hope you use source control on your project. Uh, if you're following along and you're making a space shooting game with me, uh, please let me know. It'd be great to hear. Uh, leave a like if you feel so inclined. If not, that's cool too. If you have any issues, uh, leave a comment and get in contact with me and I'll, I'll help you out uh, with any errors or any issues you happen to be running into. If anything's unclear, let me know and I'll try to clarify. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll see you next week. Uh, we'll do some more code 
I think next week we're probably going to start adding logic to the spaceships and moving them around and taking player input. Uh, so I'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.